Well, awesome today. I have a couple of friends here with me for this Zoom video call. First, uh, Boston Hockey Now's Jimmy Murphy, longtime Bruins scrab, and our buddy from Montreal, Tony Marinaro, TSN 690, the host of the Montreal Forum. We get into all kinds of debates about the Bruins and the Habs. Tony, thank you very much for joining us. You're very welcome, Joe, and I want to let everyone know right from the beginning, I'm just I'm doing it for the money. <laughs> yeah, that's it. We're very, we're very generous with the, the funds here. Big stipend for you, Tony Marinaro. I appreciate <laughs> you coming on. Um, just your take, first of all, about the play-in round, the 2014 playoff, the entire structure of it. Certainly, I want your perspective, uh, the Montreal perspective with the Habs being in, but just in general, what you think of it. All right. First of all, I'll start with the Canadians being in, all right? Let's get this out of the way right away, right? Uh, the station I work for, TSN 690, is the official partner of the Montreal Canadiens. We air Montreal Canadiens hockey on our radio station. This news is great for the Montreal Canadiens. It's great for their fans. It's great for the radio station that I work for. It's great for me. It's great for my show. Now, personally, how do I feel about it? I think it's stupid. I think a team that lost eight in a row at one point, on another occasion lost another eight in a row, on another occasion lost five in a row, on another occasion lost three in a row, finished with 31 wins and 40 losses, has a chance at a play-in to make it to the playoffs, I think is the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my life. Now, having said all of that, right, these are exceptional times that call for an exceptional measures. There's a lot of things that I don't agree with, but at the end of the day, it doesn't matter with what I agree with, what I don't agree with. I think I, I can speak for all of us when I say we all want hockey back. Yep. I think I can speak for all of us when I say the National Hockey League would want to have as many markets involved in the mix as possible to try and generate as much interest as possible to try and generate the revenues that they want to generate to try and make up for some of those lost revenues. And, you know, I'm at yep. a point where I just want sports back. So as much as I think it's stupid, I want sports back more than I think it's actually stupid, if that makes sense to you. Now, now there's no question that there's going to be, like, undeserving teams in this 2014 format. Certainly Montreal is an undeserving team to be in, in the playoffs. But they had to figure out – it had to be imperfect, right? Because they had to figure out a way – to get sort of warm-up games for all these teams with something on the line before they started the quote-unquote real playoffs where they're going to have four rounds, maybe seven games each, and it's going to start looking a lot more like the Stanley Cup playoffs that we know, right? Like there were even people in Mon – players in Montreal, right, that said if there was nothing on the line and they had no shot at the playoffs, they didn't even want to come back, right? So they there, – there had to be some system like this to get those playing games. I agree with you, though. It's – it's stupid that some teams that don't deserve to be there are there, but like, is there any other way they could have done it to avoid that? That's my question. Uh, I, I don't think there's, well, look, is there any other way they could have done it? Um, if you consider that they want to regenerate the interest with as many markets as possible, if you consider that they wanted to have all these teams playing some games before they start, some exhibitions, some plans, some right. round robins, there's probably no other way that you could have done it. Now you can make an argument that you probably could have extended the amount of teams and probably had more teams, but that takes away from the integrity even more. I mean, already I find it ridiculous that the Canadians, you know, that are pretty much 10 points out of a playoff spot with about 10 games left in their season, they were pretty much done. Let's face it. Yep. Very fine that there's, you know, it's, it's a little bit ridiculous at that point. If you would have had, the Ottawa Senators in and, and the Buffalo Sabres in. I mean, let's, let's be honest here. New Jersey Devils. Yeah. Uh, you know, it would have yeah. taken away from the integrity. And, you know, I know we'll touch on this later, but I, I want to throw it out there. I want you to later ask me about the, the, uh, the length of the playoffs, round one and round two. It's something I want to touch on. Okay. For sure. Tony, before we do that, I want to ask you just Canadian specific here. And I'm sure you'll agree with me. I'm looking at this right now and saying, yeah, this is going to be fun for a couple of weeks while they're in there because what's the chance is it going to last too long in the playoffs? But going forward, how much does this screw up the future of the franchise? I mean, this draft was going to be huge for the Montreal Canadiens, and now they're maybe, you know, screwed out of a top seven pick, or, and they 
Are they going to be able to move and deal with their picks that they have and get players they were targeting? Yeah. This looks like this is really screwing up the future for the Canadians. It, you know, well, maybe, maybe, just maybe. It all depends on where they're going to draft, obviously. But look, you know, one of the things I was thinking about when you know we first heard that the Canadians were going to be involved in the play-in is – you know, if Mark Bergevin would have known, does he trade Ilya Kovalchuk? Does right. he trade Marco Scandella? Does he trade Nate Thompson? Does he trade Nick Cousins? The Canadians are a better team with those guys in the lineup than they are without those guys. So they traded them because they were unrestricted free agents at the end of the year. And uh, because, um, you know, they you know they probably didn't think they were going to bring back some of them. Like I can tell you, Scandella wasn't interested in coming back, right? On the record, he said all the right things. Because yeah. he's a local kid, but he wasn't interested in coming back. And uh, there's a possibility of Kovalchuk coming back. Does it screw things up? I, uh, yeah, it all depends. But, you know, the Canadians have had years where they drafted third overall and it didn't work out. So Yeah, good point. You know, like, I, uh, I know Kock and Yemi's still young. But yeah. I, I didn't think – it wasn't the pick I would have made back then. I went on the record – the day of the draft uh, on our radio station by saying, hey, look, I don't know much about these players. I'm not going to be one of them that pretends to know every single thing there is to know about junior hockey players. Right? I said, I don't know much. But based on the video I've seen, based on the games that I've seen, and based on the people that I've talked to, I would go with Brady Kachuk. And the Montreal Canadiens went with a positional player mm -hmm. over the better player at the time. And although he's still young... I thought it was a mistake then. I think it's a mistake now. Uh, drafting Galchenia at third overall didn't turn out to be the right pick either when they did. So does it screw things up? The Canadians might end up drafting Tech Jimmy, and they might end up picking a, better, a player who's going to have a better career than if they would have picked six. Well, so, Tony, do you still yeah. think that the, uh, the the Habs need to throw some money at some of the Bruins scouts and, uh, and take them away from the Bruins organization? That was one of my all-time favorite rants from you. What, where did that come from? Was it just watching the young players that the Bruins have coming through the pipeline and saying what, what the hell's going on in Montreal? By the way, uh, so that, that happened the day after the Boston Bruins walked into the Bell Center <laughs> and beat the Canadians by a score of 8-1. to one. But prior to that game, I had a lot of respect for the, the job the Bruins scouts have done over the past, particularly mm -hmm. in the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League. Now, it doesn't mean that they got them all right, with all due respect to uh, Jordan Caron, uh, he didn't pan out all that well. With all due respect to his world, uh, he hasn't panned out all that well. But David Krejci, Brad Marchand, and Patrice Bergeron were drafted from the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League. And Marsh, uh, Marchand was, what, 70 or 72? Mm -hmm. uh, Bergeron was 45. Krejci was later first round or second round, I think. I, I don't have it here in front of me. Yeah. But the Canadians had a crack at all these players and opted not, you know, and didn't choose them. And the Bruins did. And at one point, I think, you know, and it happens once, it happens twice, it happens three times. And I know a lot of people will say, well, if the Bruins scouts were that good, they would have drafted all these guys in the first round. Okay, true, fair enough. But in the end, they still drafted them. So. Yep. Uh, look, I've talked to a lot of hockey people who tell me it's not as easy as that, that usually um, you only have a chance to sign these scouts when um, they're about to leave the organization or a new management team comes in and fires the old crew. But look, I know you can't talk to a Boston Bruins scout if he's presently employed. But are you telling me that in mm -hmm. hockey – you can't find out one of their friends and have their friend deliver a message for you. You thought that can't happen? They so call that back, back channel, yeah. Tony. Back channels. I find out who yeah. the Boston Bruins scout is, right? I got a buddy, Tom Smith, who went to school with one of these guys. And I call Tom and I say, hey, Tom, the next time you talk to your buddy, tell him before he uh, extends his contract with the Bruins <laughs> that I'm willing to give him double. <laughs> and the next time they go out for a drink, he tells them that. You try, I can't do that? <laughs> By the way, on that video, on that video, I was doing the show that day from a, a car dealership, Montreal Auto Prix. 
Yep. Where, uh, pretty much every Wednesday throughout the season, we do our show from there, right? And, uh, and um, we, we had a big laugh because if I was doing it in studio, everyone in my environment knows that I can get carried away from time to time. <laughs> that lady that was behind the desk working at the dealership had never seen me get carried away. That day. But I can tell you, I have, a, I have something for you. You ready for the stat? Yes. In the history of TSN 690's Facebook page, that rant has more views than any other video. Uh, that's great. Over 30 more, more, than the, more than he saved the dog? Uh, well, he said he, he, he found the dog who was not on Facebook at the time. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, but this, this rant. I, re I remember driving down with you. Remember that? Yeah, yeah, I remember I that. I remember driving down to Boston with you on that. We had yeah, the guy with us. Uh, yeah. This rant uh, on uh, the Canadians should throw money at the Bruins scouts, 32,000 views. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Hey, are you, is there concern in Montreal specifically with the Canadians and, you know, COVID-19 and everything that's going on? And I know Mitch Marner talked about this in what was like a Twitch video or whatever about yeah. Max Domi being a type 1 diabetic. I mean, yeah. there's a handful of coaches that are 60 or older in the NHL. Claude Julien's one of them. You know, it, Montreal is one of those teams that I think has got some cases where it, there's going to be a lot of concerns about safety for them when they do, you know, resume play. Well, first of all, the number one concern in Montreal is if the Bruins win the Stanley Cup. That's the reason, <laughs> that's the reason why there are some hockey fans that actually do not want hockey to resume this year. <laughs> the Bruins have the best record in the regular season, and everyone is scared that the Bruins are going to win the Cup. Now, having said that, this time off here, these three months, probably the Boston Bruins don't come back to be the same team that they were three months ago, right? So now that the hope in Montreal is that the Bruins get bounced right away in the first round, the Canadians win the play-in, and the Canadians can actually go further in the playoffs than the Bruins. Wouldn't that be something, right? <laughs> you know, um, I just got off the phone probably about an hour ago with Dr. Leanne Park. She's an infectious disease specialist at the Jewish General Hospital here in Montreal. And I asked her about Max Domi, because if there's one thing that we do know about this COVID guys is, yeah. is that, you know, it's the elderly that are, that, are, that are losing their lives. But if there's someone that's losing their life before the age of 80, it's usually someone that has a pre-existing health condition. Yep. Max Domi is a diabetic type one. I mean, that is extremely dangerous. Now, I asked Dr. Parks about the document the National Hockey League put forward in the protocol, and she said it's a very well thought out document, by the way, right? She said that the, the National Hockey League has covered oh, yeah. really like most of the bases, if not all of them. She was really impressed by it, but she said, you know, in the end, it's going to come down to individual choice. Yep. Max Domi's individual choice. But she said, you know, it it really is scary and it really is dangerous for a player to have a pre-existing health condition like this. And even though the protocol is there and the document is there and they're going to take all safety measures, do you want to risk it? Now, would I? No. Would you, Joe? Probably not. Not with little kids. Nope. Probably not. But if there's one thing, guys, our experience has shown us, is that you, Joe Haggerty, and you, Jimmy Murphy, and me, Tony Marinaro, we're not wired like these guys. Mm -hmm. That's why I got this. <laughs> and they don't. Right? That's why when the going gets tough. There we go, Tony. That's why, at, at, least, at least you're running. I'm not standing. <laughs> When, when I hop on a treadmill, right, I, I, I want to get off after three minutes. That's why <laughs> yeah. sometimes I don't hop on the treadmill. That's why I don't go for runs. That's why sometimes yeah. I look at the bike and I leave it in the garage and I end up lying down on my bed for three hours anyway because I'm wired a certain way. They're not. These guys want to play. Mm -hmm. They, they want to play. In, and, and sometimes, you know, they – they get off on people telling them they can't imagine them doing certain things. They yeah. get off on... You ever hear of Tisha Thomas? <laughs> yeah, they get off Perfect on... Perfect example. Themselves. They get off on challenging themselves. So, 
Look, I can't speak for Max Domi, but if I were a betting man, I bet you he'd play. Yeah. Yeah. Let me ask some, uh, Tony, just staying on the topics of question marks and what might happen there. A lot of people obviously talking about them being quarantined while we're there. People saying maybe up to two months and the players saying, look, I don't want to be away from my family that long. And, but, you know, I heard Brian Burke talking and he made a great point. He said, look, unless you do go deep, you're not going to be gone that long. I mean, yeah. so this is kind of a, it's kind of a moot argument. I mean, would you agree yeah. with that or no? Well, uh, I think that's a very, very good point. I also throw at you, uh, I can tell you what I've gone through with my family, with my wife and my kids and uh, everyone pretty much being home for the last three months, I would love to get away for this. <laughs> I knew you were going to go there. I can't, I can't well, take we're this. We're all the same boat, buddy. We're all the same. Yeah, I really can't take this anymore. Two months in Vegas? And, and, I'll tell you, and I'll tell you what my divorce lawyer says, all right? A good friend of mine, <laughs> the, the legal expert at TSN 690, said that there's, there's a divorce in the word COVID. <laughs> right? There's a divorce in the word COVID. Work it out. D O V I D. Yeah, it's good to be single. Divorce. Excuse what? me. And would you, seeing as every coach is entitled to one timeout, would you allow me to take a 10 second timeout instead of a 30? Yes. Okay, I just mm -hmm. want to disinfect the screen here. Hold oh, on. please do. Go yeah. for it. Disinfect the screen. All right. We're a, bunch, we're a bunch of dirty hockey media people. We got to just affect go. everything, Tony. I'm all sanitized. Ready to go. <laughs> That's something I'm interested in. And how that goes, guys. What uh, what did what did you uh, want to say about the the rounds and the number of games? Yeah, you know the one thing that's that's on the table right now with the National Hockey League, right, is that round one and round two uh, is a best of five. Now it's not yeah. set in mm -hmm. stone, right? It's up for debate and it's up for discussion even though I said I'd take anything, and I will. Don't get me wrong. I'll take the first two rounds being a best of five and the last two rounds being a best of seven. But my personal wish is I really want to see best of sevens, guys. And yeah. there's not going to be an asterisk next to this Stanley Cup champion. There won't because at the end of the day, you know, you're still going to have been the best of the best to win it. Yeah. You know, there's only so much that luck and flu can take you, right? At the end of the day, the team that's going to win it, I've always believed that the team that won it deserves to win it. That's just the way I've always thought. But for me, one of the biggest things about winning the Stanley Cup, and I think it's the toughest trophy to win in all of professional sports, is the fact that the Stanley Cup run is not a sprint, it's a marathon. So after you have your very long season of 82 games, it's possible that you play four seven-game series you play 28 games and, and up to 28 games. And it's such a marathon. I remember the last time the Canadians won the Stanley Cup. Uh, I was talking to a friend of mine, most likely on a rotary phone at that point. <laughs> and uh, and uh, I, I was, we were talking, at, one, one of the images that really stood out was Kirk Muller, guys, was like this. He was skin and bones. Yeah. Like, it, it, it looked like the Canadians and Kirk Muller could not have played one more game that series. And they won the final in five, by the way. But you guys saw it with the Bruins in their cup run in, in 2011, yeah. right? All the injuries the guys played through, the guys were like, they were a broken vehicle at the end of it all. Yeah. And for me, if you have a best of five in the first two rounds, and let's say you win the first series in three and you win the second series in four. Um, it's, I don't know, it's not the same. I just, I just hope, for me, the National Hockey League playoffs are best of seven. And I know once upon a time, they used to have best of five, I get it. But for me, it's best of seven, and that's what I want to see. Do you, do you uh, no, teams uh, like the Habs, like um, the Rangers, like some of these play-in teams – could have an advantage in a short series because of Carey Price, because of Hanger Lundqvist. Like, they get a goalie that's on top of his game early. Like, that could yeah. win the series, even if they don't deserve it necessarily. But, but listen, I, I don't know if, if, if that's the advantage, and I'm going to tell you why, right? Because the Canadians would possibly play their play in versus the Penguins, right? Yeah. Matt Murray won a Stanley Cup. Did you see how hot he got when he made that run? Tristan yep. Jarry this year won the number one job. Did you see how hot he was for various moments of the season with a, with a very decimated team? He got really hot. So, 
You know, the way Carey Price can get hot, Jerry can get hot, Murray can get hot, Tuka Rask can get hot for the Bruins. Anyone can get hot. I mean, the goalies nowadays, I find, and you correct me if I'm wrong, um, I don't think that there's a goalie anymore that is head and shoulders above everyone else. You know, back then there was Marty Berdur and there was Patrick Hua and there were the rest, or there was Dominic Kasich and, and Berdur and Hua and there were the rest. And now I find there's a lot of very good goalies who on any given night could outgoal the other goalie, could be better than the other guy. The one area where I'm not saying the Canadians have an advantage, but it could advantage teams like the Canadians is we're in uncharted waters right now. The unknown, right? Who knows what the Boston Bruins are going to look like when they come back? Yep. Who knows if they're just going to be able to get back on that bike and start pedaling as fast as they were pedaling before? We don't know that. Who knows um, which players really took extra care of themselves? Who knows which players' conditioning has never been better right now? And, 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 and you know, on the opposite, whose conditioning has never been this bad? Right. So, you know, because we don't know how good those teams that were good, like the Canadians can't possibly be worse when they come back. They were terrible this year. <laughs> but the Bruins were so good, and the Lightning were so good, and the Blues were so good, that it's hard to imagine them being better. You get it? Yeah. Some of these teams that were very good dip a bit, and the Canadians can't possibly be worse. At that point, it could favor teams like the Canadians. Well, it just with the price thing, though, guys, I want to say is like yeah. I think that the the idea of him being able to you know put them on a run. Obviously, he's a great goalie, and like you said, there's so many. But I think when you see how he's voted in the players' poll, what three years straight now is the best goal, maybe even longer than that. I don't know for sure, but is he in their heads? And I think that's what was going on there with the Penguins having to sort of fight that back because I think that a lot of fans and media think that Carey Price is in the heads of other NHL players. Um, you'd have to be an NHL player to ask them, right? But, yeah, he, he has been voted as the best in the National them. Hockey League in their eyes. Is he uh-huh. in their heads? Um, I think a lot of it has to do with reputation, Right when when he won those four individual awards, probably what was it uh, now? Fifteen years ago, maybe yeah. probably about six years ago, uh, five or six years ago, when he won those four individual awards. Uh, I, I think a lot of players recognize the fact that Carey Price doesn't play for a very good team. I think they recognize that for the most part, he's got an average defense in front of him. So um, I think they take all of that into consideration, but. Look, could, could Price get hot? Yeah, of, of course he can yeah. get hot, you know, but, you know, I, I don't think Sidney Crosby and Evgeny Malkin are going to lose too much sleep about going up against Carey Price. Yeah. I, I mean, maybe maybe Connor Sheary or, 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 or Zucker or, or, you know, Simo or some of those guys, maybe they will. But, I mean, do you think the Canadians aren't worried about Sidney Crosby and Evgeny Malkin? Yeah. Of course. You uh, so how do you think? Do you think we're gonna actually play Tony? I mean, do you think that we're we're gonna? You know, I know this is the unknown, and none yeah. of us have any idea. But at, at the end of the day, do you think in August we're actually gonna see playoff hockey? Because the players are wired differently than we are, like I just said. Yeah. They want to play. I think there's some GMs that maybe would want it less than some players. You talked about the Canadian situation. I don't know how badly Mark Bergevin would want it. Maybe he does because it's a chance for his team to prove the doubters wrong and prove that, you know what, they could be better and they could bounce back. But you know what? Call me crazy. I, I've been up and down. Eh? I've been a roller coaster. Some days I wake up thinking there's going to be sports and some days I think there's not. But I take a look. Look, soccer has got it started. The Bundesliga mm-hmm. started about three weeks ago. Yep. Uh, the Premiership is going to start on the the, the 17th of June. Uh, Italy Serie A is going to start on the 20th. Um, you know what? I, I think um, uh, your president has let all the presidents of the sports leagues know that he really wants sports to be back. Um, mm-hmm. I think the leagues 
the leagues need to come back. I think the sports fan needs to come back. So to answer your question, maybe call me crazy if you want, but I think they'll come back. I, I do believe they'll come back. I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm wondering how they're going to pull it off next year. If the Stanley Cup final is going to take place in October, yeah. I'm wondering how they're going to be able to pull it off next year if the league's going to start in January. That I'm, how about I don't Gary Bettman hinting? Gary Bettman hinted at uh, opening the season with the Winter Classic in his conference call last week. Yeah. Or this week, I mean, yeah. I mean, that's what they're thinking right now. That's how late, that's how far into the winter they're thinking. Yeah. I, you know what, though? I've always thought the NHL season is too long. Even yeah. Said yeah. I appreciate the marriage totally. of it all. You know the way they ended this year at around the 70-game mark? I'll sign up for that going forward. Never going to happen. Oh, yeah. Because more games, more games on television, more gates – more ticket sales and all that stuff. But you know what? If going forward, they would stop at 70 games instead of 82, man, I would love that because it would reduce the back-to-backs. It would reduce the three and fours. It would reduce the four and mm-hmm. sixes. And if the players have enough recovery time, they're going to produce more. Yeah. Even in the best markets like Boston, you know, people aren't really on board and fully into hockey at the earliest around Thanksgiving. Yeah. And usually around, you know, Christmas, New Year's when, you know, football season is over. That may change now in New England now that Tom Brady, Tom, Tampa Bay is going on with the Buccaneers. And uh, <laughs> I don't think the Patriots are going to be uh, the, the yeah. fever pitch here that they once were, you know, moving forward. But, I, you know, I think you're right. On, I'm right on board with that, too. Shortening the yeah. season, starting later, doing whatever you have to do. And maybe, Tony, maybe they're going to stumble onto some things here. I, I'm curious to see how it's going to get played on the ice. You know, are they not going to allow scrums after the whistles? Are they not going to allow players to hug after goals? Like some of the stuff that we saw with uh, Major League Baseball and, you know, spacing out on the bench. And are they going to all wear face bubbles and stuff like that? Like there's going to be so much that we don't even know uh, what's going to happen. I would think they're going to play with face shields. Yep. All of them, yeah. Number one. Number two, though, from a production standpoint, this is such a great opportunity. It is. To do something really cool. I mean, I'm thinking they need to do a 27. Like, just pick pick four teams and follow them through this whole thing. I, I, I think it would be great for the viewer, you know. And it, would, it would draw in that average fan or the, the fan that's even not a hockey fan yet. It, it was a hit when they used to do it, so why not try that? And mic up all the players, get the sounds of the game, mic up all the players, do all that stuff. But the – the camera's down lower in the stands than they've ever been before. Yeah. Just, Jimmy just said something, and the, and, and the lights just went off here. <laughs> you follow a couple of superstars in the National Hockey League or a couple of teams around, right? You put together an entire production, and November and December, when there's no hockey, yeah, you play it. There you go. You play it. There you go. That way, you know? You put together a documentary like The Last Dance, the way they I wouldn't be surprised if they're not working on that already. I mean, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. I think this whole thing, guys, is a test run, too. I think, you know, the whole plan and all that, I think they're really looking at maybe not 24, but 20 teams for the future. Are you, hey, Tony, are you, uh, we talked about this on the radio yesterday. Are you, uh, you, you think the Bruins got screwed by this format? I do, yeah. I think the Bruins got screwed. Mm-hmm. They played 85% of their season. They were the best team in the regular season in the National Hockey League. They were, were going to win the, the President's Trophy. Let's be honest here. Don't tell me they have to play the last 10 games. They were going to win it. Everyone knows that. And now, if they lose their three-round robin games, they could end up with the fourth seed instead of the first. So, an outcome of three games um, will have more bearing than what they did for 85% of their season. It's stupid. All of this is stupid, yeah. but I can't wait for it to resume. <laughs> There's guys, no hope in this, though, guys. Well, There's Tony, no hope one, advantage. Tony, one question before uh, we yeah. let you go. I've asked a, a bunch of people this. We're actually working on something uh, on this subject. Yeah. What was it like for you in Montreal, a fan of all the Montreal sports, to watch you know, a Montreal son, Ray Bork, uh, leave the Bruins, go to the Avalanche, and, and finally win his Stanley Cup at the end of his career. What was the reaction like in, in Montreal when that happened? The reaction was if Ray Bork was going to win a Stanley Cup, this is the way we wanted it, with a jersey <laughs> other than the Bruins. That was the reaction. The second reaction was, well, here's a guy who grew up in Montreal, right? No yeah. problem. 
Look, Ville Saint Laurent. I, you know, it's such a, the career that he had. If he hadn't won a Stanley Cup, it's just, and I feel so bad for guys like Marcel Dion, who had an unbelievable career mm. and no Stanley Cup to show for it. And it's just, if there's any little bit of justice, guys that have had great careers should win a Stanley Cup. And you know what? I hope Joe Thornton gets to win a Stanley Cup because he had a great career. And that's just, yep. just. How about Henrik Lundqvist? I wouldn't mind seeing the Rangers win it this year. And yeah. then get on the get on the cup. Henrik Lundqvist also had a very good career. You're right. There's a lot of those guys, and it's it's. You know what? I'm just Bork was one of the greatest defensemen of all time, and he was so great. And great players usually end up winning Stanley Cups. And it doesn't always work out that way, but they usually do. And I'm happy it worked out for Raymond Bork. Tony, thank you for the time, my friend. Yeah, everyone was really happy, especially really happy when he took the cup and he brought it back to Boston. That was great, too. <laughs> yeah, there were some people in Boston that didn't like that, like the corner office at Lansdowne. I don't think Harry, Harry Sinden was too happy about that. Hey, hopefully we can get together. And we can go to, uh, is it Trescas? Is it Trescas, Ray's Restaurant? Trescas? Trescas. Trescas. Absolutely. Yeah. We can all get together and meet up at Trescas. Let's do it. We're going we're gonna to break bread at Trescas when this is all over, Tony. You got it. Take it easy, bud. Thanks. Good, buddy. And don't forget, we took a game seven. <laughs> 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 See you, see you, Tony.